Hi, my name is Derek Simpson. I'm a point guard for Rutgers men's basketball, and this is my Scarlet Knight tail. Because he has two much older sisters, he has always been around a lot of older kids. And so when he was a little kid, and because he's always been very athletic, he would be this little kid who could play any sport. Um, from the time he was really tiny, he'd be outside trying to play basketball with the big boys. He was four and five years old, trying to play football with them. And he was little, like in first grade, and these really a lot of big older boys, like fourth and fifth grade, would ring the doorbell and say, can Derek come play football with us? I've been coaching for almost 27 years, and I played football, basketball, and baseball my entire life. And when you see kids that are very young and athletic, you don't know if they're going to progress until, you know, the high school years. Uh, I've seen a lot of kids who fizzed out from second, third grade, and, and they were phenoms. And then when, once they got to, to that middle school, they just, they, they just crashed. You know, I started really getting, you know, ooh and wah when he was really uh, freshman year. You know, and that was, that was pretty much it. And then just, you know, watched him as the years went on and he, he just progressed. Well, I'm, I'm not a coach. I mean, I don't have any, any experience, but I'm a mom, so. You know, I just thought that he would play something because he was so athletic from the time he was little. So for a while, I thought he was going to play football. He was a quarterback, and, uh, and again, I, I thought he really liked it. So I thought I was going to be outside in the cold for a long time. Um, and I, I like basketball a lot more than I like football. So I was, my, but I didn't want to, I didn't want that to influence his decision. I'm a point guard, I'm a pass first point guard. I'm gonna always look to get my teammates open. You know, I'll knock down a couple shots if you need me to. I'm here to make big moments and make history pretty much. So I coached him until seventh grade and I knew I had to stop coaching him. Cause there was a little bit of tension going on. Uh, you know, that father son coaching thing is, is not always perfect. So I gave him to another coach, uh, Coach Dave Distel, and, and Dave really, really helped him develop a lot. And I always told him, if you're doing the same thing you did last year, you're not getting any better. You got to improve on that. My father, um, you know, he was a head case for me when I was younger. He was, he was hard to deal with, but you know, now that I look back on it, it, it only helped me in the long run because my father played high school basketball. He was a thousand point scorer in high school and college, so he kind of taught me the ropes on how to, you know, deal with a lot of stuff. Um, you know, we still talk, you know, we, we talk every week about basketball. Uh, whether, we you know, it's not necessarily even about me. It's yeah. about other people and, you know, um, just, we just talk about the game a lot. So, you know, he's just a big guide for me uh, going forward. My mom is like my therapist uh, on the low. Like, she, she really helps me um, get through a lot of stuff. You know, we talk all the time. She's a social worker, so she knows how to pick people's brains a lot. Um, she, she brought me into the world of dogs and animals, pretty much. We have a, a passion for dogs, Derek and I, mm -hmm. and uh, we have a special dog, he and I. Um, it's a shepherd. Even if, he was ha if he's having a good day, bad day, whatever, he actually went through dog training with this dog, uh, Coco. Um, that he walks a lot, that he has trained, that he would never even need a leash for. It's just a different side of him. You know, he knows how to calm himself down. He knows kind of those ways to go and hang out and take a walk or take a run or whatever. Um, and, uh, and also that's something that he and I have always done together. Ever since I was younger, I've always had an animal around me. Whatever animals that are, they've kind of been like the way of also my therapist in a way. Because you can sit there, they're not going to talk back to you, they're just kind of going to chill there with you. Um, and even before, during my COVID year, my junior year, before basketball games, uh, since we got out of school at like 12 o'clock, we didn't have a game till 6, I would go and walk my dog to kind of clear my mind, get, get the get a little breathing going, you know, kind of just take my mind off of basketball and stuff like that. So my mom kind of brought me into that, that idea. And 
ever since then, I haven't really looked back. I, you know, me and my mom, my animals, we got a tight, we got a tight bond. <laughs> Courtney is the big bully. She she bullies me. She's a, she look she's been looking at me in my face. She's tall, um, but she's a big influence on me because she also played athletics in college. Um, she played soccer, and you know she was always an athlete coming up. So she always helped me and helped me deal with my father uh, through all the years because my father also used to coach her when she was younger. So she helped me out with all that. Uh, Marissa, my other sister, my oldest sister. Um, She's the brainiac of the family. She helps me, um, you know, get through a lot of schoolwork and stuff like that. We talk all the time. Um, I go and visit her in Baltimore every once in a while. She, she, she's the more mature one in the family uh, out of all three of us, I think. So I kind of listen to her advice and stuff like that. He tortured them, absolutely tortured them. Um, you know, banging on the doors all the time, banging on the bathroom door. Um, the oldest one is almost 11 years older than him, and then the other one is seven years older than him. Um, so, you know, they, they adore him. They are like other mothers to him. Um, They're constantly, you know, checking in with him all the time. They give him a lot of support. Um, but yeah, he's, he's got, he has three mothers and a grandmother um, who dote on him. Um, and he is the first grandson of uh, three generations on uh, the maternal side. So he's really, really special. Because, well, really because of my uh, father uh, passing on, you know, before he was born, he and his grandmother are very close. She kind of showed up, uh, you know, and helped to take care of him an awful lot um, when he was a baby and through his life. Um, so she's been very involved since he was little and has uh, all these photo albums and then started scrapbooking all the articles about all his sports, all these um, photos of everything that he's done. So there's, I think, five of these huge scrapbooks now that we have at the house. And she just started one now for Rutgers. Um, so she'll probably continue all that. My grandma moved here specifically to kind of grow up with me when I was about sixth grade. So she, she kind of, um, you know, funny story, she, she picked me up from detention at sixth grade. You know, she did all, she did all the little stuff that uh, nobody knew. You saw the scrapbooks and that was, that was like amazing to see, you know, that she put all her time and effort into that. Lenape High School is, is home to me. Uh, I went there for four four years. It's a public school that my sister, one of my sisters, went to. Um, it's like all my all my friends and family went there. I went to a public school my whole life, so pretty much like going to Lenape like finishes finishes off the job to me. You know, we we had a couple schools that we we, we looked at. Uh, at first, we were a little concerned about the schedule. You know, we wanted, we wanted to play a competitive schedule. And when Coach Wolf took over uh, from Coach Guitar, he said, hey, listen, we're gonna play a competitive schedule because we're gonna have a good team. The other big part was the education part. You know, we just wanted to, to, for him to be able to uh, do well in school and prepare for the next level if that was going to be the next level for him to go to college. Uh, I think Lenape prepared him very well, so I think we did, we made the right choice. There are not too many starting out head coaches, varsity basketball head coaches that can have a, uh, a player like Derek Simpson as your point guard, right? So how lucky was I to have Derek as a, you know, from my first year as a head coach um, as the point guard. Super lucky. First time I ever saw Derek play, it was, I, I had gotten phone calls like, hey, uh, Matt, you got, you got this, got this guy Derek, he, he's really, really good. I don't know if he can play varsity right away, but he's really good. First game, we watch him play and we're like, Holy crap, he's, he's gonna play varsity right away. Then, you know, second game comes and I said, you know, holy crap, he's gonna play a ton. And the third game comes and I said, he's our starting point guard. Like, oh my goodness, he was just so impressive. Um, and to be able to have a, a, a guard for four years, my first four years as head coach, that give him the ball and you know he's gonna make the right play every time. I call it LAD, life after Derek. I'm, I'm exploring what that's gonna be like. I'm a little nervous, but. 
Um, yeah, he, he's just an incredible talent, an incredible kid to be able to have as, as starting out. Coming into my first year, I don't know what to expect. He's coming into her, his first year. He doesn't really know what to expect either. It was kind of like we build it off of each other. You know, we kind of learned from each other. And as, you know, as the weeks, the months, the years went on, we, we kind of, um, we got a bigger bond to get together. We kind of picked each other's brains apart a little better. Um, and I kind of became a coach on the court for him. Um, and you know, I know that was a help. That was a help to him and everything. And um, I know I helped him out a lot. And I'm, and I'm excited to see what Lenape has to do in the next couple years. But I'm glad that I was be able to part of, you know, the start of the journey pretty much for him. Then I, I tell you, the first game I saw him play varsity, uh, I believe it was Camden Catholic, and then it was Paul the sixth, the second game. I, I was, those were memorable moments for me because he was a freshman, and he actually, he did pretty well. I thought he did pretty well, and that's what I was, I told you before, is you know, kind of becoming a fan of his a little bit because he did everything that game. He was more aggressive, and I really loved him because he was more aggressive with the ball and he was scoring. You know. Other than that, I mean, his senior year was phenomenal. Like just watching him grow. And, and he must have had games where he had five dunks and it's just like, where's this, you know, like, this unbelievable because of his defense, you know? So yeah, we, had, we, had we had a few memorable moments here. It was, it was fun here, it was fun. We have a, a, a we play in Morristown High School, who was a top 10 South Jersey. And we run this play called Lenape, whatever. It's a, it's a zone set for a lob for him. So he starts with the ball and it's a dribble handoff. And then somebody sets a back screen on the back of the zone. And they, I see the pass in the air. And I'm like, oh man, he airmailed it. And Derek goes up and I don't know how he caught it. Cocked back and flushed it. And I was like, oh my. It was, it was probably the, the, the most impressive play I've ever seen. My growth was something that you know many people just didn't didn't see coming, and um, I told people like like you can't don't get don't get hype about a seventh, eighth, ninth grader because you never know what they're gonna be when they get later in their years. And um, my dad never bragged about me. He never told people, oh, he's gonna be this, he's gonna be that. He just said, we gonna we're gonna see. Turned out good in my eyes. You know, the Elizabeth game, we scored a thousand point at Elizabeth, you know, not here. That was during the COVID year. That was, that was a nice moment. His junior year against Elizabeth, there were no playoffs because of COVID. And he, had, he was 19 points away from, from a thousand. I said, hey, coach, you know, Derek's 19 away from a thousand. Oh, coach, we'll stop it. I don't think he ever thought he was getting that. He had 23 in the first half. I scored 32 points that game. And I wasn't worried about, I didn't like, I remember coach had told me, he was like, yeah, like you're gonna break the scoring record in the next couple games. And I, I, didn't, I didn't really care that much. Um, that was not my goal. My goal was to win, win the game. And we were playing a good team at the time and I came out, I was just on fire. And by the end of the game, it was like, oh yeah, you broke the scoring record. I was like, oh, okay, all right, that's, that's cool. They got me a sign. Like it was, it was, um, it was something that many, not many get to do. So that was a great, that was a, you know, a, a blessing. Coach uh, Wolf calls me and he says, hey, listen, he goes, Rutgers really likes Derek. I'm like, really? He said, yeah, they really like him. And um, I think they're gonna, they're gonna offer him. So my dad, when I had first told him that Brandon Knight had followed me on Twitter, he texted me and stuff like that. He was like, do you know who that is? I was like, no, not really. He's like, you don't know who Brandon Knight is? I said, no. And he was like, Brandon Knight is the Pittsburgh legend like the, one of the best point guards to ever come out of Pittsburgh. And I was like, oh, okay. Not knowing much of it. And you know, he, he kind of, my dad kind of told me like, if you're getting recruited by the state school, like you have to take this into consideration. We went up and, and saw Coach, Coach Pico and, and I thought it was a great experience for Derek to sit and listen. Uh, we had just came back from another visit from another school and I wanted Derek to sit and talk to the coaches and, and understand them and, and, and try to get, you can't know a coach in a day, but try to get their philosophy because I'm not playing for them. Mom's not playing for them. You're playing for them. You know, so you have to really embrace the coach and, and, and see what you think of him. And he loved Coach Pico, like right off the bat. For our family and friends and everybody in our community, um, Rutgers was really a great choice. You know, this would really be the best solution for all of us. 
um, but thinking that he wants a big experience too. So the Big Ten is really going to be a great experience for him. Um, and then when I saw the arena and everything and spoke with uh, Coach Peichel and everything, I thought this, this is really, this is a great match for him. After I had the experience of them coming to the, you know, to the Lenape games and then I saw Derek interact with them, um, I thought that was, that was a great match. Um, I saw the way that Derek uh, interacted with them and, uh, you know, I just saw his, his smile and the way he was relaxed and um, happy to see them and so that to me made me feel good. I couldn't be more thrilled for him um, and for Rutgers because I think it's a, it's a great match. Um, his family, he's so close with his family, his parents, his grandma, they'll be able to see games. Selfishly, I'm thrilled as well because I can't wait to go see some games and watch them on TV. Credit to Rutgers, I had sent out probably cold, like a, those random emails to about 20 schools that he had mentioned he was interested in going to, and one was Rutgers. And I pressed send on the email and I got a phone call from Coach Peichel 10 minutes later. Coach, thanks for reaching out. You know, tell me a little about Derek. I'm excited. I saw the highlight. I'm excited. The bottom line was he could have trained. He could have played at Roselle Catholic. He could have played at Roman Catholic. He wanted to play here um, for his hometown and do something special here because he's a loyal kid. And I think if he would have gone to those schools, there might have been some, some bigger name schools that were after him. But Rutgers didn't care that other people weren't necessarily recruiting him. They saw what he identified, what he wanted, and saw that I love him and we want him. And they made Derek feel that way. And, so it was a no-brainer for Derek. Pretty much, uh, it's, it's funny because Gio had said in one of his interviews, uh, one of his podcasts, that um, Paykel kind of took off his ring and threw it at him. Um, it was funny because Paykel did the same thing to me. I think it was on my official visit. He was like, I don't want to date you, I want to marry you. He didn't throw the ring at me, but he told me that. And when, and, um, when I thought about it, I was like, like, nobody else has said that to me. And then pretty much when we went to Steakhouse 85 for, I think it was the last night here, right across the street from the hotel, he was just kind of like, you know, like, if you don't come here, I, I think you made a wrong decision on, to go, to go anywhere else. So pretty much, you know, I took that in consideration. I was like, why would I want to go anywhere else? You know, my family can come see me. I can play top-notch basketball. I can be challenged at any time. And, you know, I, I was like, you know, I want to take the opportunity. I want, I want to be challenged. Uh, well, I wish that he enjoys it uh, as a mom. I wish that he has a great time. I wish that he does really well in college because, you know, uh, our daughters have. Um, I wish that uh, he um, does really, really well uh, because I know that he has really high hopes uh, for a lot of success in basketball. Um, so I hope he meets those goals. Um, and all those challenges. And uh, I hope that he makes great friendships like he did in high school, like those long lasting friendships that he'll have forever. I think it's just that he wants to compete, but it's an inner compete. That's why he gets up. I, I remember, you know, he just wanted to, freshman year, he wanted to prove that, you know, listen, I, I, I'm dedicated, coach. You know, I'm dedicated, Coach Wolf. I want to come. 6.30 morning, I'm dropping off at workouts. He'd be up at 6 o'clock ready for me to go. His, he doesn't worry, and, and this is what I, I love about this kid, he doesn't worry about rankings. He doesn't worry about who's scoring more points. And he, he does, he's not that way. So, you know, when you say his why, his why is just to compete. You know, I just want to compete today. That's why I'm getting up early. I just want to play today. He's a winner, right? He's going to win and he's going to help do everything he can to help the Rutgers program stay where they've, where those guys have kind of taken them and Coach Peichel. I strive to be somebody that, you know, not everybody likes, but, you know, I, I, I strive to be different than others. Um, different is a word I've always used um, because, you know, everybody's different in their own way and I, I'm different in my own way. And I think the why, the why to that is because I want to be great in something that I do. You know, I, I think basketball is something that I can, I can take to the next level and I can, I can take on through a journey. Not many other people can do. 